So uh, we covered pretty much everything that is humane. So let's go way back to the Exodus days, back in so, the early 80s. So I would like to ask ask you, how was those early days, you know, between 82, 83, when you were re re replacing Kirk and then pretty much after, right after that recording, Bonded by Bloods, right? Magical. There's only one word for those times and that's magical. You know, everything was so new, was so fresh. Um, we were so young and the energy was so off the hook. Um, and it wasn't just the bands. It was like, it was so, I mean, in, in the East Bay, in the Bay Area, our scene, um, when we were performing Bonded by Blood, the album for the first time, it's like coming up in the clubs, right? Uh, I mean, it was like, I always like to say that Exodus was just the five guys playing the music at the party. The real show was the people at the show, you know what I mean? The, the fans because it was insane, bro. It was like, you know, it, thrash, I mean, just killing each other. It was, you know, it was really, really a special, special time in music in the Bay Area. Right. I think when you joined the band, you had like very little experience playing guitar, right? You, like you well, were I, like I, less than a year ago? Yeah, I played, I played for about two years before I joined Exodus. Um, and, uh, I had never played a show in front of people, you know. Mm. My first show ever was at San Francisco at Wolfgang's with Loudness. We, we supported Loudness, and it was sold out, and I was nervous, right? I was scared, dude. <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> and I ended, up, I ended up playing with my back to the crowd, like, for the first three quarters of the show until oh, Bailoff. Right. Love comes over and pulls on me. He says, dude, get over here. You know what I mean? He said, I was, yeah, I was scared. I had only been, I, I sat with the music for two weeks. So it was all so new. And I was just really, really wasn't confident that I knew the material enough to really, to, 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 to play live. You know, I was nervous. So I will tell you, um, I think that experience, my first show with Exodus, I think I learned more that night <laughs> than any every, any night ever. I think just just yeah. by sitting here and watching Paul and watching Gary and watching Robbie and Tom, you know, play and they were they were playing they were right and right in the in the in the crowd's face and just man, and it was like wow, look at them go! It was really really cool. Mm -hmm. Such yeah. a such a, an incredible experience for me. And what do you remember about the recording process for Bonded by Blood? Oh, God. A, a lot of it. Uh, most of it. You know, we were, number one, we were just, I don't think we, we couldn't even buy alcohol. You know what I mean? <laughs> but how young we were, you know? Yeah, you were like 18, 19 yeah, at the point? Young. 18, 19. So, uh, you know, it was just, it was, you know, it was like one of those pinch yourself moments, like something that you, you know, you, you, you sit in your room all day long and play guitar and learn, try to learn how to play guitar. And you dream of going in a studio and having someone, you know, pay for you to record an album and they're getting ready to promote it worldwide. And, and there's talk about tour and holy cow, what's going on? It's like, oh, my God. You know, it's like everything's moving so fast and you're so young and uh, just is incredible. You know, and learning every man, every day, going in the studio, learning, you know, because when you play live, it's a lot different than when you play in the studio. You know, you have to be really dialed in with your instrument. You know, you, you, you know, the microphone doesn't lie and it picks up every little sound, you know, so yeah. you have to be a. Uh, you have to be on top of your game, but you know, you have to be, you have to practice a lot. And, and being at the, being at that, it was the first time in the studio. It's like, you're this 18, 19 year old sponge, just like absorbing all this knowledge, you know, what mics to use, where to put them, how to, how to, how to, what levels are and EQs and compressors and all this stuff, dude, that you've never, you've never dealt with before. And it's like, you have a professional engineer and, and a producer 
right. behind you telling you, you know, that sucks. That was awesome. <laughs> do it you know, again. Do, do it again, you know, and you're just like, wow, this is incredible. <laughs> so you then you, did you guys have any idea that album would become a thrash metal masterpiece? Um, that's a good question. I, I, no, absolutely not. No, we weren't even thinking back then, dude, we were just, we were, it, it, were, it was day by day stuff. When we actually, from the first day of recording Bonded by Blood, stuff started moving so fast that we, it was hard to keep track of, honestly, you know, uh, besides the delays, you know, the album was done, but we got delayed because of record companies and all this stuff, right? I mean, you know? It was supposed to be out in 84, I think, right? Oh, yeah, it got delayed. You know, and that and that goes that goes hand in hand with, you know, we're so young. We don't know what we're doing. We don't know. We signed a deal with these people, um, Ken and Todd from Torrid Records. You know, they, they didn't do us wrong, but they really, they were, I want to say how, they were probably as green as we were. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We had um, to do it all again. We could have gone with Metal Blade. We could have gone with Rick Rubin. We could have gone, you know, uh, Johnny Z, Megaforce. You know what I mean? We had offers, dude. Mm -hmm. But uh, Ken and Todd showed up, and uh, they were the first ones there. And we just said, let's just let's do this. You know, uh, thank God they had the right distribution and stuff like that but it, it delayed everything for like almost a year and um but i will say after it was out like from the the release date i don't i'm not sure like june of 85 i think it was something like that uh we were in europe within three months on a bus wow. on a tour bus dude in europe amazing bus, 18 yeah. 19 year old kids <laughs> You're living the life already, yeah. so yeah. It was. All right, I mean, that's cool. Huge now, right? I mean, thrash metal is like beyond big nowadays, but back then, well, pretty new. Yeah, it was pretty new, but it was still to us. It was the the people showing up at the bus and Exodus, Exodus, Exodus. <laughs> autographs, and they want pics, and we're just like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> It felt yeah, like the Beatles, <laughs> Europe. I don't like it sometimes, dude. It was like crazy. But, you know, it's so just so lucky to be a part of it. You know what I mean? Just so lucky to be there when it was when it, when when there was no such thing as thrash metal, when it was just the very beginning of like the inception of it. Right? Yeah, it must have it must have honestly, it must have been how the Beatles felt when rock and roll and Elvis Presley when they when they first released rock and roll. You know what I mean? It was like no one knew who rock and what rock and roll was until the Beatles and um, Elvis Presley, and they, you know, they, it must have been like crazy for them too. Yeah, yeah. All right, let's go to Fabulous Disaster, one of my personal favorites. Uh, this album is kind of like the Exodus is, is starting to sound more mature, more mature, right? It's still fresh metal, it's still really fast. Uh, the production was better, the sound was better. So what was the mindset uh, when you guys were writing and recording that, that album to make it sound more like professional, let's say? Well, honestly, I think, uh, well, we had we had a lot of time to write the music. Uh, I think that um, when me and Gary worked together back then, it was like kind of magical, dude. You know, we, we wrote songs and he'd come, he'd come to practice with a riff and I'd go, I'd, I'd listen to it for a little while and I'd go home and I'd put, I'd, I'd write a, like a little part over that riff, like for instance, um, Cajun Hell, uh, you know, all the, all the, the clean bluesy guitar and the slide guitar and all that stuff, you know, Gary comes home, over to practice with that, you know, and then I would come in uh, with the intro, the, the clean bluesy guitar, you know, and that's how, that's how basically me and me and Gary wrote, you know, he'd come with a riff and then I'd come and play some on top of that riff and then we just build it, you know, and build, and it was really cool. And I think that probably we were growing as guitar players 
we were growing as songwriters and uh and again i mean we were just having so much fun and that's a huge deal when you're when you're trying to create music uh it, it's so important for it to be fun you know what i mean to be fun and and uh just the chemistry between us was pretty was pretty magical dude yeah yeah having fun is really key when you're it recording is. an album, because there is a lot of pressure from the record label, from your... Yeah. It was uh, getting that way. It was getting that way. You know, uh, Bond of My Blood, there was a huge, there was a huge delay. Places of the Flesh, another delay, you know? Um, you know, th like, these albums should have been 85, 86, but they were... Uh, yeah, you're right. Should have been 84, 85, 86. But it turned out to be 85, 87, or 80, something mm -hmm. like that. You know, and it was just, it, man, I tell you, that was frustrating because we were watching bands leave us behind, like Metallica, you know. You know, I mean, they were, you know, we basically were ready to, to release Bonded by Blood exactly the same time as Kill em All and Rain of Blood. Right. We, they, all the albums were done about the same exact time. They were all finished, recorded, ready to go. And of course, ours gets delayed. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Time wasn't on your side. Like, well, you know, it's a song, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right. So another uh, album that really I really, really like, like, actually, is an Exodus fan. fan. And I got really, I, I mean, like, a little upset about the, the fact that fans don't like this album. It's Force of Habit. Uh, I know, yeah, it's not a thrash album per se. It's not that fast. It sounds a little bit, a bit more commercial. So my question is, did the label pressure you to write more commercial stuff? Never did they want. Not, never did they want. Uh, the only thing the label was really a big part of was more of the covers. They didn't want any, like... They didn't want any crazy covers, you know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. uh, but honestly, as far as songwriting, I mean, Impact is imminent. They even let me and Gary produce it, you know what I mean? And that that for for Capitol Records to go to go out and say, you know, here's this much money, uh, we want you to write this this album, but we're gonna let you guys produce it as well. That was a huge deal. That was a big deal. Um, and that which is cool because I love Impact is Eminent. I like you know, I like Force of Habit too. There's just some um no 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 hate, etc. <laughs> but there's I think there's some vocals that could be better on, on Force of Habit. You know what I mean? But like the, more, the, more the, aggressive, you mean? No, I think they could just be better. The performance, I think oh, etc. Okay. Um but I think that um the guitar work on Force of Habit is some of the best me and Gary have ever done. Yep. I'll, yeah. I'll go out and say that. Yeah. The solos are insane. Some of them are really, really good. Yeah, there are some great yeah. tunes in it, like Good Day, good day to Die, Me, Myself, myself and I, Ooh, yeah. and some yeah. others, yeah. I, yeah there's, Count Your there's, Blessings, right? Count Your Blessings is awesome. Yeah, there's some great songs on that album, dude. Yeah, yeah. So for the, for the Ear Exodus fans out there that don't, don't, don't like the album, album Give it another, another chance, or we're gonna be yeah, surprised. Absolutely. I mean, you know, like I said, you know, we're we're all getting older, and uh, man, to this day, I, honestly, because we just released the live album, right? Yeah, yeah. So when Gary sent me that re recording, it just somehow just popped up that 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 live version of that show, and he goes, "Dude, he sends it to me. and He goes, dude, you gotta listen to this. It's so freaking heavy." And the performance, we're all really playing because there's no overdubs on it at all. It's all live. So, but it's really tight. It's really, really good. And I'm like, holy cow, man, this is amazing. <laughs> and he goes, um, we're on the phone talking. He goes, man, Nuclear Blast wants to put this out on, on a new live album. And I'm like, what? Really? Mm -hmm. and I was like, damn, let's do it, dude. You know, and I'm, I'm super stoked on that album. People are loving it. Yeah, yeah, me so too. Fat. It's, yeah. so fast. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so fast. It's it's fast, but like I said, tight, tight like, like on point. It, it doesn't, doesn't sound, sound like a mess, mess. so it sounds really, really good. Yeah, so, 
uh, why did why did it take almost ten years to resuscitate the band for good? Because I know that you guys did this one one off show in '97 with Paul Bailoff, right? But the next studio album came out in '04. Hold on, so that was um, Chuck Billy's. We did a reunion show. Oh, you know one, yeah, yeah, for Chuck. Chuck's. Yeah, yeah. Chuck, he had cancer. We, yeah. we, that was 2001. All kinds of bands showed up and played. Um, yeah, so that show ignited like Temple of the Damned. You know, we said, man, why not? Let's just let's just do this. Let's do an album. You know, let's go ahead and do this album. Uh, I'm sure I sure I'm glad we did because it's probably one of the best albums Exodus ever recorded. Temple of the Dam is amazing. Yeah, it's a masterpiece as well. Yeah, I like, I like it a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I go I'll go back and listen to it, man. And some of some of the some of the stuff that me and Gary were doing is pretty insane. And I, I'm not gonna lie, I was I was uh. It was my last album with Exodus, right? So, uh, I was um, I was dealing with some some personal issues, uh, and that's pretty much why I left the band because I just couldn't. I had to stop what I was doing, and I had to take care of my kids, and I had to take care of myself. You know what I mean? Um, and it, honestly, it was the hardest decision I ever made in my life. To never, it will always be the hardest decision I ever made. But I don't regret it because I'm I'm here and I'm healthy and I'm I'm clean and sober and I'm happy. You know what I mean? So And you took care of your family, they're doing well because of that. Yeah. You must be really proud. I can't complain. All right. Last question, Rick. We got we got one minute and thirty seconds. So to close the Zoom thing. So what do you think about the Exodus releases without you on guitars? Like the last four or five Oh, dude, what do I think about them? I think they're heavy as hell. I think the music is, I think Gary Holt is by far one of the best songwriters in all of thrash metal, bar none, for sure. Um, he's a beast. Gary's a beast, you know what I mean? Um, I will say that I was kind of disappointed when he left to join Slayer. I will say that. But it, it did, in the long run, it just done Exodus a lot of good. You know, uh, it's it's gotten a lot more fans, yada, yada, yada. But anyway, to answer your question, I love the material. Mm -hmm. Persona non grata is insane. Music is it's, it's, it's awesome. What about the Rob Dukes album? Rob Dukes brought another he brought another level to Exodus. I think I, I, uh, I think it made it like. I'm not going to say new metal, but I will say. More brutal, Super aggressive, over yeah. the top, angry, right? Yeah, yeah. I love Rob is like one of my favorite singers, but and if honestly, for the record, if I ever do another thrash band, guess who's gonna be my singer? Rob Dukes. Awesome. Yes. He already said he I already nailed him down, so it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> if you like this interview, please give me a thumbs up, leave a comment. And share the video with all your friends. Also, very important, please don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell.